Paragon, Rhythm of War. In times of conflict, there have always been heroes who inspire those around them. For millennia, drummers have used their skills to support, motivate, and rally their troops. They drive their comrades on to victory with a quiet dignity. Narbash in Paragon uses his drum to support his team. He can use it to get into and out of situations very quickly, healing his team as well as operating some stun and CC effects. Let's get into Narbash, have a look at his abilities quickly and give you a rundown of a build. So here we go, abilities are on screen. Let's start off, we're going to do this very quickly, it's not that difficult, but Q is going to be March. Now obviously that grants Narbash and nearby allies extra movement speed and you can see the amount of movement speed on the screen and it is a very effective way of getting your teammates into fights, moving around the map and getting them out of fights as well. Very awesome ability. This can also be used with minions on your side to power them through the lanes. And I do this a lot to make sure I'm able to get that extra push, especially if I'm leaving a lane because it pushes them just a tiny bit ahead. This ability, very, very strong. Song of My People is gonna be a toggle aura which grants that extra health regeneration for your team. You need to turn it on to obviously use the health regeneration and turn it off. Make sure that you turn it off early game as well at specific times because obviously the mana, this is very mana intensive. So make sure you're using that to support your team in terms of the longevity of the fight. It gives you and your teammates sustain and it is very, very useful indeed. This health regen along with your march on Q does work on minions so you can sustain your minion waves as well so if you are having trouble versus an enemy and they're potentially you know ranging you or zoning you out you can heal your minions up so that you can get a bit of a stronger wave pushing through and you can get tons of minions if they come up to this kind of wall it's really really effective as well crash bang boom is your ultimate on to narbash of course is a very very strong ability he basically bangs his drum in a massive aoe he slows enemies and he knocks them up at the end of the cast. It is interruptible, of course, so be careful for other Narbashes, be careful for anyone else that can stun you out of your ultimate. It's a bit like, you know, Gideon's kind of black hole as well. So you can see there it says a deafening radius AoE that knocks up enemies and applies a 200 movement speed slow deals 405 physical damage over three seconds. Um, even though you obviously you're a caster, you've got, you know, that kind of the, you've got the drumsticks physical you know anyway goes without saying but this is so good because if you're quite close to enemies and they're not expecting you know they're not aware or they're forgotten that you've got a Q which can speed you into battle you can literally leg it into battle with that you know that movement speed for a few seconds use your R slow them especially if someone coming into your lane from the right hand side the left hand side or from the jungle wherever you can really slow down the enemy team and get in there with a nice ult, nice control effect at the end, and it does a nice amount of damage. Really, at low level as well, you can 1v1 people with this pretty well, especially if you stack it out of your stun. You've got a lot of CC control in there. If they get up, and another way to actually make sure that you get your ultimate off is to stun them first with your right click, which we're going to talk about in a moment, and then use your ultimate as well. Really, really strong ability. The knock up, the slow, you know, it's the same also AoE area as um, Gideon's Black Hole, comparing it a lot to Gideon, even though, you know, they're completely different. Um, 
but yeah, it's really, really powerful and is so good in team fights with the examples you can, you've seen on your screen as well. Um, it can help you, you know, it, it can actually help you to escape because obviously it's slowing. And if you're the, if you're tanky, which is the way I'm playing him, and you need to get your teammates out and they're being chased, I jump in with my Q and I jump in with my ultimate. I slow them down and I will either die or survive because I'm just so damn tanky. You can hear me thumping the table because it's so damn true. Um, but yeah, an awesome, awesome ability. So let's move over to the next one. Obviously, Wallop is just, you know, your basic left mouse button attack. Just does damage, of course. It's just a melee attack. It's very slow. It's got low damage. Um, it's really just to, you know, give you some damage, to be honest. It's not m anything massive. Of course, if you've got attack speed and whatnot, you know, this is going to help you. But you're not really clear. You haven't got good lane clear. You're a support. That is your job. Um, and then Funk is really important. This is your right mouse button. So you throw a drumstick that deals damage and stuns enemies for an amount of time. Obviously, when you level this up, these stats kind of change as well, but the stun is very good. Um, it can help to block, make sure that you mitigate some ultimates. I, I'm using Gideon again as an example, but when he goes up for his black hole, Boom, just a funk, just throwing out my stick to just interrupt that black hole is such an important thing. It's just unbelievable. So you can stun people out of their ultimates. You can use it to catch up with enemies. You know, the combinations, this is why I love this hero because I've really thought about the combinations. I really love the combinations as well. So think about your Q, your march. You, an enemy's further ahead, they're in travel mode or whatever, you know, you're also in travel mode and you want to pull them out and it's your only ranged ability. You move forward, you use your march, hopefully they're in range of that and then you're able to bring them out of mode and you're actually able to catch up with them because you've stunned them. Um, so you've been able to catch up time that way and then you can use your Q because you've actually, you know, brought them out of combat and the Q isn't that quick, like, you know, it's it's not comparable to like travel mode because it's very slow and then you've got to get back into travel mode as you come out so I wouldn't use Q that much to travel around the map but to get in and out of fights in terms of everyone being in combat it's very very powerful and that's where you should be using it but that funk is so good even for setting up your own ultimates for setting other people's ultimates up and that's why R, your, R, your ultimate um, is also that crash bang boom very important it can help set up a lot of moves and you've seen this throughout this video what we're going to do now is just have a quick look at a build i'm going to say quick look it's about 15 minutes or so that i have come up with originally um basically from launch of this hero a tanky almost god mode um build as well which is very very nice Hey everyone, so moving on to cards for Narbash specifically. As I've said, like I play him as a really tanky, supported character. I don't feel as if he's meant to be for damage, mainly because you have hardly any damage abilities other than your stun, which is quite a high amount of damage. Even if you don't build damage, you can get him like to 200 damage onto that stun if you're just going off your base and going off leveling the actual skill itself. That's at the moment, of course, on release. So, I always fill out my card packs to 40. I know a lot of people go to like 26, whatever, to, to you know make sure they use their cards properly. But I adapt to different situations and I use different armor sets according to situations as well. So as you can see on my left hand side, gone for the standard thing. You know, I've gone for Centurion, obviously going for um, health and damage bonus there as well. Um, you know, I want to be more tanky and that's just, you know, that makes the most sense in this build. I'm supporting my allies, I'm tanking, I'm also blocking for allies as well. If there's not a tank on our team, I can block a lot of abilities for our team. I can put our team into battle. I can take them out, of course, using my Q. That's very, very important because we need to make sure that we're able to get in and out very quickly in case, obviously, things hit the fan and I'm trying not to swear because obviously that's not going to be very, very useful. So um, that's March, of course, that I'm talking about in terms of my Q. So let's go over to the cards. As you can see, a fairly tanky setup indeed. I obviously going for your Harvester Key. I'll go for the Health and the Mana Potion. Um, the mana is very intensive in terms of, you know, mana usage on Narbash, because you've got an E that you're toggling on and off. And obviously, 
that song of my people is healing a lot for, you know, if, if you put it on, it's healing. If you take it off, it's not. And if you forget to take it off, it rinses your mana so hard. I remember when I was first playing him, getting used to that toggle was, you know, pretty difficult. And uh, obviously by now, I've obviously been quite experienced with him now as well. And I'm able to toggle it on and off when I need. Now, this is why you need to stack mana pretty heavily. Now, mana regen is something you could try now this is not going to be like a final build forever that i'm going to play i'm still toying around but i made this build and i have not changed it since and it's very very effective um so let's go through some of the cards here see i've gone for amulet of the veteran this is for pure hp this is for pure health in the game of course now i will use these cards in different orders specific to the composition that i'm going up against i believe in um, changing my build up according to my team and not always going for the same setup and the same build layout throughout and I see a lot of players doing that but I don't feel it's the best way that you know in terms of, of the support I should be running this character so I've got a full 40 stack of, stack of cards and people may say that that's not a great idea but it's just the way I'm doing it of course if I screw up um, I've also got you know some backup cards there as well an amulet of the veteran a good stacking of the health and uh, I don't use this a lot if I'm honest but I do use a lot of the other cards we'll see why circle of health you can see there as well so obviously having the mana in there is going to be very 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 important um, you can see as well it grants 4.2 health regen to nearby allies so as well as my E it is going to give me that unique passive as well it makes complete sense to me Hey ho. Mana increase, obviously, like I'm talking about as well. So I've stacked it up with uh, two, um, two, point, uh, two cost mana cards as well as a free cost. Now, obviously, you don't want to always stack out your cards with freeze um, because, you know, you'll find out, especially if you're leveling through the game, you want to make sure you've got some lower upgrades so you can, you know, be ahead of opposite team members, opposite um, enemies, of course, and maybe, you know, just keeping up that extra stat as much as you can using all those card points when you can then discarding you know and upgrading something else later on um with freeze if you should so want um but circlet of health like i said you know it's, it's pretty good um more mana and obviously health regen for your buddies so it helps it stacks obviously with that e which was the song of my people which of course is the health regen to nearby allies but remember it uses up mana so that's why we've got the mana in there as well. Next, we're going for Lord's Ward. Now, I don't really upgrade this. I've got upgrade cards in there, but they're cards that I can use in other upgrades anyway. It's just in case I do so wish. Um, but Lord's Ward, obviously, wards are pretty important in the game. You need to make sure you're warding up your lanes and whatnot. Especially if I'm Narvash as well. If I ward up... And I, I almost think of warding as supporting your team as well, right? Because you're making sure that other people aren't able to get into a place when they can kill your team. Um, so it's almost a setup for the support. Um, so I think very much that I should be placing a lot of wards all the time. I get this is a very early card for me, card pickup. It's not my first out of base card pickup, which might change in future. Um, but I need that mana pot to make sure that I'm able to use my abilities because it's very slow going for Narbash at the beginning. I always level my Q first because it speeds up minions, it speeds up my team. It really helps to catch up with enemies as well because level one, you know, anyone's fair game. I can work 1v1 uh, quite well as well. So an important card to make sure you grab at some point, some kind of ward, some kind of ward card that you maybe want to upgrade. Again, I don't really upgrade ward cards. I'm not sure I would advise doing it as well. That could be diff that could it could be various opinions on that, but for my build and for the way I'm playing Narbash, that's just it. Pendulum of Lords. Now, I've got this in as a just in case, really, more than anything, because obviously Pendulum of Lords is your cooldown reduction, but it does give you mana and also health as well. Um so yeah, it's really up to you, of course, you know, having extra cooldown reduction for your abilities is great. You know, having that cooldown reduction for things like, you know, don't need it for my E, for my toggle, um, but for my Q, for my speed, very important indeed. And my stun, my stun on my right mouse button is so powerful, as you will see and have seen in this video, 
that it is very nice to have that up again as, as constantly as I can. I don't use this card all the time. It's there just in case I want to get those extra stuns off and we haven't got real CC control on our team. And you know, it's very situational, this build. This is the thing, it's, um, I can change it up when I want. I can adapt on the fly during the game, which is why I love, you know, picking those kind of card sets. Not, oh God, I picked this, you know, tanky build, but I haven't got, you know, energy damage reduction and what lot as well like my barrier cards and things like that so let's move on so it's very basic you know talking about this is the first time i've done one of these build videos as well so if you have any kind of um you know feedback below that would be great as well it's just a very basic discussion about narbash and how i'm playing him currently our temper plate we all know what temper plate is it's a very basic card i think pretty sure that most people have this when they start um, it is physical armor and health uh, obviously you get an extra 44 physical armor when you are indeed fully upgraded pardon me disgraceful birth. um you didn't hear that thankfully uh so <laughs> You can see I've got the greater guards in there as well with the health. Um, so damage reduction and HP bonus as well. It, I'm tanking. It's, it's survivability, you know. The longer I'm alive in fights, the longer I can support my team. I can get my stuns off. I can get my um, ultimate off as well. All very, very important. Crash bang boom. Sometimes, you know, it's an, it's an AOE around you as you move. If you're in a massive team fight, and you are not surviving that fight and you've gone really glassy and you've gone for damage or you've gone for pure you know i don't know even just hp as well and you've got no damage reduction in terms of you know those guys who can get really close to you in melee range then you're not going to be able to survive to get off the, those abilities like crash bang boom because it's an aoe around you that is going to slow opponents as well as knocking them out for the end so it's important to get the whole channel off so I want to be tanking as much as possible. So as much tankiness and HP as I can get is really, really good. Um, I'm there to support. I'm there to, you know, I'm a utility for my team to set up fights, to end fights, to stop um, ultimates, say from uh, a Gideon ultimate as well. You know, I can throw out my drumstick with my right click and I can get off that nice you know that nice stun so it can interrupt his ability that funk is so useful and the damage output is you know my highest damage as well so i can finish off opponents from range that's my only real ranged ability um other than maybe you could argue i guess using q my march to get into fights quickly as well is almost like having it no it's not really is it but you know what i mean you know what i'm trying to say <laughs> so anyway let's continue on with the build Tune Barrier again, you know, fairly obvious. Energy Armor, but with also the addition of health. So you can stack health in there. Um, whether or not you want to stack all health in there or some more barriers is really up to you. Um, but again, you know, Tune Barrier is more dependent on whether or not I'm going up against energy damage um, heroes once again. So I did stick a barrier card in this set to make sure that, you know, I can adapt on the fly, like I said. And I really feel like people should be stacking up to 40 you know it doesn't cost you anything um a lot of the build guides out there and a lot of the uh, you know the agora the deck builders they have like 20 they have that under 30 stack of cards to make sure you know they're going for the right thing every time um but i always stack up to 40 and maybe you know maybe people do actually do that a lot of the time um but i make sure i do because i want to make sure that i'm adapting on the fly during the game because i feel that's the best option for me specifically as well and probably for you so let's go to Honor of the Pure, sorry, Honor the Pure, which is a really fantastic card. Now you may not have this, um, you may not have a sum of the cards, and it might be worth me trying to talk about why this card specifically is very, very useful. Obviously it's definitely useful to do that. So shield yourself and nearby allies for five seconds, up, absorbing up to 50 plus damage. Um, this is very useful in specific situations when you know even if you're in a 2v2 or you're in a team fight as well you have you're literally on the thread of health and you need just that extra little tiny buffer to get that kill and it's happened multiple occasions where i can help my teammates to perform extremely well with just a little bit of extra health um, not health, shield, sorry. So it, it's almost like an extra bit of health anyway because it's a shield and it absorbs that extra damage. 
really useful for mitigating that damage and it helps especially when you're regening health you're speeding up your team you're giving him shield you know it goes with that supportive role it's a really nice card to pick up for me specifically i use it on many occasions i even use it just for myself to get out of jail free if you're using your q if you're using march and you want to get out of a fight and your team is screwed and they're low hp you pop your shield you pop your q or you put pop them in different uh, order as well you know depending on situation you can get out of most fights it's a really it's a really nice little card gives you that mana extra health as well and you can pop mana and greater health and whatnot in there as well if you should so wish it's not a gr massively complicated build to be honest i mean you know it's fairly obvious i mean you can really go for what you want but here i've gone for i haven't gone for much mana region now this is particularly could be an issue um, and has been in the past mana region doesn't feel that strong for me at the moment stacking mana does i don't back to the base that much i seem to have enough mana i normally keep my mana pot actually till quite late in the game um sometimes i've even used two but normally sticking with one and i won't get my rid of my mana pot until you know almost level 10 or so so that's pretty good um you could argue that you know upgrades and cards might be more useful but i feel like you know that fast mana region is pretty nice but then i do go for quenching scales now you might not have this card again but you can obviously go for something similar in terms of mana region um health health region now this is why i'm not sure about this card isn't you know that needed but it's nice to have it on top of your already heal um regen ability of course on your e which is your song of my people or of course if it's your circle on your playstation pad actually pretty probably could be quite a good hero on playstation pad so yeah might have to try that one out just randomly thinking about it and you can see unique passive while burning gain plus 66 energy armor as well so not a bad passive but really looking at the mana regen there as well as the health regen obviously you can stick those sparks in which is what i've done to go for mana regen and that will be a uh, kind of mid to late game card normally that i stick in um i don't stick that in so early i probably could stick it in a little bit earlier but yeah so generally guys and you can see i've stuck some extra upgrades in there of course just in case i've screwed up my pack anywhere my card upgrades and i've got spares there left as well to make sure that i'm going to be okay so this is the basic build it's tanky it's supporty it's got a ton of mana it's got a lot of damage reduction in terms of energy and physical which is very important to think about both i feel in a lot of builds um dependent on your escapes as well but in terms of narbash if i'm in a big team fight i'm in melee range i'm not ranging i'm not murdoch i'm not you know i'm not a ranger i'm not i'm, I'm not a caster from range i'm a melee caster so you're in the mix you're in the fight you really need that armor you need that physical reduction you obviously if you're not going up against any fighters and you're not going up against any melee then you know you don't need to take tempered plate as much of course you don't need to, you then you can just go with your chin barrier and you can be okay that way so this is the build i hope it's been useful for you if you've got any discussion about this obviously mention it in the comments below um and yeah let's continue with the video so just a few short plays here i'm trying to defend a tower i am actually one versus three i pop my ultimate so obviously slowing them and putting them up in the air and getting a stun onto gadget trying to body block her but i get pulled by grux you can see people coming down my lane already as one versus three i have managed to push three people back and look at the players now as well you see an ultimate coming out from our gadget gideon is low gets killed out by gadget there as well grux is really low but gadget on the opposite team puts the speed gate down slows us down we managed to kill the gadget so in a 1v3 that started with narbash we were able to get two kills this is a surprise attack on two enemy members who are way too pushed out and i combo my ultimate up with gideon there and that's another great combination here he pulls out a nice little blink as well which puts him closer to the enemy we pull him out of combat and i just get the speed boost to carry gideon through to get the kill in the end this this final play 
really was just nice positioning by myself and the teammates as well. Unfortunately, the enemy are pushed right back. They try to go in for a kill on our teammate, but actually with the heal support that comes out from my E, we're able to sustain as well as the stunning and general buffs that I'm giving out. Gideon trying to slow me there as well, not really helping him. I pop off a heal, which gives us more sustain as well. I nip away just to make get the focus off of me, but then just supporting from afar, our rampage is very low. So he starts to move away. I body block him because I am fully tanky and the rock hits me. If it had hit Rampage, that would have been really bad. So obviously using my Q to speed away there, we get away and out of range. Now we pull those members out significantly and Gideon makes a massive mistake. Blinks through and actually gets killed off there in the end. Their Rampage very low himself gets really taken out here as well. But he's making a massive mistake and you can see I speed us through to get the final kill onto him. So a couple of great plays there just to show you examples of how good this hero is make sure to like comment and subscribe on this video for future content as well i'll be bringing you more paragon videos in the near future don't forget to follow subscribe i'll see you very soon always feedback is appreciated